Hi Josh, what does your what what are you guys doing? A worksheet. Yep. <laughs> what is it focusing on though? My mum is composing numbers one factory. Okay. Seven hundred and minutes. Rose, what is this group doing? Um, they are doing the maths multiplication challenge where they've already done one table, so they're gonna have to do another and over five again to see who's first. Right. Oh, did this all day. Don't think it's all of you. Ben, what are you guys doing? I am making a replica of my Minecraft house computer. Uh, um, um, the game I play at home. Uh huh. And right now, everyone's stealing my stuff, but I'm still trying to make it. And you're trying to knock down our houses. Yes. I, me, Hannah, and Karis are making a little house, and it's going to have all these little doors and windows, and it's going to be like a giant mansion. And there's going to be a door at the front, and there's going to be a giant roof over the top. I've Fantastic. We have to start again because um, I brought the door. Yeah, because it didn't really, because Harris brought the door and we couldn't fit. Um, no, when there's a so lots of hands-on activities, lots of investigations from my maths practice. Uh, outside we have a group there doing a um, investigation, busting the myth that the taller you are, the further you jump. So that's involving measurement, questioning, working mathematically, but also small group skills as well. Another important uh, aspect of my maths program is the way students record all of their work and so um, drawing up tables, tallying data and putting down what they believe in terms of their maths learning to consolidate is also a feature of my maths lessons. Welcome to my classroom. Um, this is a project um, that I had started the year off um, with my students looking at the um, Gary Crew picture book Caleb so it's a gothic sort of novel picture novel and um, the art that was sparked from this book um, the comprehension tasks um, and just looking at the themes surrounding the character of Caleb was the main focus so comprehension tasks, researching, um, and pr the students had to present their work on a smart notebook and attach it to their blog, which they did as well. So that was that project. This is, uh, in my classroom, I always try and um, be explicit with what a text type is and the features of that text type. So for kids who might not retain a lot of information when they're told something, it's really helpful to have uh, meaningful displays. And so I'll have quite a rich sort of literacy area um, in my classroom. So for example, this one here is an example of an exposition, which was our focus. And so I have an exposition type and just the features of the exposition sort of highlighted to the side so that kids you know when it comes to writing their own text types they can refer to the walls they can refer to examples that are there that they've studied and gone through themselves just to refer back to what is expected um, here i have my awesome writers checklist it's just a little flow chart have i read or listened carefully have i understood the question have I thought about what my opinion is? Have I written my answer and elaborated where I've needed to? Have I gone back and reread for meaning? Have I edited my work? And down here, if you can see, um, that's me. And that's, um, you know, they need to come and see me if they've done all of those things. Um, so it's just a little checklist for kids to make sure that they know where they're going and what they have to do to produce some good work.
So over here, this is something that I found really useful for, especially my big kids. So if you can see A to D work samples for year six. Now you can see there's A, B, C, and D, and under each category, I've printed off various work samples uh, from a website called ARC, the Assessment and Resource Centre. And it's just basically giving students explicit guidelines as to what a C grade looks like, what a D grade looks like, what an A grade looks like at that particular level. So for a D, it's quite surprising because you look at something, say like this, and you might think, oh, there's a lot there, you know, there's been a little bit of planning involved there, there's a timeline, and yet the writing has been very um, brief, they haven't elaborated, there's no structure, it doesn't flow, and so therefore it's a D. So I found this wall really helpful just to really clearly state um, where the kids need to go with their writing. This was an art project based on an exhibition that we went to as a class um, looking at Picasso. And so the students, they had work to fill in while they were at the exhibition. But then what they did was when we came back to school, they had to turn it into some sort of meaningful uh, poster, writing information down, um, drawing. So yeah, it was, it was really, it was really nice. A nice day with the kids. And this is some great work, another teacher actually, he um, started this lesson where the kids had to draw jaguars and it was beautiful. So when um, I came back in, I thought the work was so beautiful and so amazing. I turned it into this jungle scene, which was very fabulous. Here's more of a pan of my classroom. So I'm really lucky because I have access to technology. I have access to um, Mac, so there's a digital um, laptop library next door that I can borrow whenever I want to. So teaching with technology has been such a privilege um, and I enjoy it a lot. Here's my reward system. So I find my students are highly motivated by their earning power. So, you know, you can adapt that to however you would like, whether that's behaviours that you want to see demonstrated more or whether it's quality work that you're rewarding for. So with these guys we have this thing called payroll where they accumulate coins and that gets added up onto the wall um, and then at the end of the term we're going to have a class auction for these prizes here and the prizes are quite substantial. I think you know being at a year six age, year five age um, like a pencil or a ruler doesn't necessarily cut it anymore so um, I'll be spending some bucks myself on that but in terms of the class management and um, enthusiasm for producing quality work the kids are inspired so that's good works for me this is my HSIE wall where just famous people that we've studied in our HSIE topic. We're just getting to learn about them and I just thought visually for kids that it might be a little bit hard to remember the names of them and who they were having that presented um, I thought was important. So yes, this is my classroom. It's a great place, it's a great learning environment. Um, yeah, thank you. Hey Marcus, can I interview you champ? Come over here. Marcus, interview, interview. Come on, come closer. Now Marcus, tell me about your game. Well, the game we're playing is um, hockey. Yep. And we are winning by three points and the other team's losing by two points. Okay, and okay. Yeah, I just switched um, goalie for yep. Playing yep. and Scott. Who came up with the game? Um, I think it was 
squint and Give the egg. Beautiful. And, and yeah. you've sort of adapted Sorry. it as you needed to. Yeah. That's awesome. Great. Have a great time. Hi, boys. Can you tell me about your game? Oh, no, they're we've, off. Well, we're Josh. playing pots and robbers. <laughs> yep. And we're the robbers. Yep. And the cops are trying to tag us. Uh -huh. And we have these Oz bags, Oz tags, so that we don't have to grab onto them. Uh huh. And we can just snatch it off. Beautiful. And we can only tag one at a time. What makes this game so fun? Um. Well, uh, you've got to try and get people out of jail. Yeah, that's. And like. If you're good at agility, it's kind of fun because yep. you can just weave in and out. Yep. And jump. Beautiful. And stuff. Great. You guys keep playing. You're having a great time. So this is this idea of I'm I'm calling it free range sport, um, but it's basically the premise that kids have a lot of time um, where their lives are structured, and the idea is to provide moments where they can demonstrate um, independence as a group of kids, organize themselves independently. The nice thing about this is that they can pull out all manner of sports equipment um, and it doesn't and it doesn't matter. Um, and I suppose they can sort of they can take greater risks while still being supervised without being told what to do and without it being run by other adults. Um, so the qualities that we're looking for are kids being able to organise themselves quickly, to make things work, to solve problems. Hi David, can I interview you? Mate, I, it's on film. It's on film. Um, you know, and basically enjoy themselves. and just have a bit of greater freedom in what they do. Everyone is active. Everyone is cooperating, mostly. Um, and, it's, and it's good, it's been a good experiment. So next week we're gonna be um, assessing students on their ability to involve themselves in games, to come up with games, to include others to share the resources, to solve any problems um, between themselves. Yeah, so we're going to start doing that next week. So pack up time, here we have these boys, they've had awesome fun with the mats and they've been great.